um, they're cheering you on. There's a cloud of witnesses that's saying, go for the gold, um, because your sadness doesn't honor their memory. That's what I told him. I couldn't believe those words. I, I, if I wouldn't have been studying this, I would have never known what to say to him. <laughs> and so what did you say to him? I said to him, I said, you have to bury her out of your sight. That's crazy. Powerful, isn't it? going on right from going on because um, you know people think that they're you know they're holding on to them I've met several people in the homeless like that they just gave up because I met another guy who was a young guy and his mom had died and his father committed suicide and he was down there for I think he was down there a year before I even met him and I knew him for like six months and you want to know you want to hear something crazy he had a deg- not a degree, but he had like his vocational skill in mechanical. Uh, he worked on uh, big trucks. Diesel mechanic. Yeah, diesel mechanic, and he had forgotten. When his mom died, and when his dad shot himself, he completely forgot. He just went out to be homeless. He was only 33 when I met him, and when when I met him, we just latched onto him. We were giving him <coughs> like a, a furnace. <laughs> my mom bought him some kind of furnace thing to keep him warm in, in the winter because it was cold. I bought him. We bought him sleeping bags. We bought him an MP3 player so he could hear the word. <laughs> we bought him all kinds of stuff, food. I gave him tickets to the movie theater, <laughs> just whatever, you know. But then we found out that he had that. My mom found it. She found out that he was. He actually had his um, degree. Bang! He's off the street because I showed him. I said, "You're holding on. You're not." You're not helping yourself by holding on to them. He thought he could hold on to his parents and stay in misery. That's the devil's lie to him. So once we found that out, I mean, he's in Greenville now. He's having a great life. He's, I think he's even married. Last time I talked to him, he was married with a woman who had a kid. Just like that, y'all. So you've got to bury your dead out of your sight. I mean, I thank God that... God sent me back home to him because I know without a shadow of a doubt that Michael is in heaven. Because he said to me that day, he said, if you, you know, it's up to you. If Michael died tonight, where would he go? And I knew he was going to hell. So if I've got one reward, that's it. <laughs> he, I saved someone from hell by going back home and forgiving them. You never know what tomorrow's going to bring. I mean, I, I wasn't that smart. God showed me what to do. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, and so we go on to, we, we read verse 6. So let's go on. Let's go to, let's, let's read verse 6 again and go to 9. Hear us, my Lord. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our graves. None of us will refuse his grave for burying your dead. So Abraham rose. I'm looking at home. And bowed to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, If it is your wish for me to bury my dad in my sight, hear me and approach. Ephron, the son of Zohar, for me, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he owns, which is at the end of his field. For the full price, let him give it to me in your presence for a burial site. Now, Abraham does a lot of really smart things. First of all, again, Abraham lived in a tent among pagans. Okay? They weren't righteous people. Remember, to be righteous, you had to be circumcised. Remember? To have the promise. So they were not circumcised. But he made a huge impact on them. Look what it said. Well, you've heard this. Don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. I hate that saying. Because that's not true. I honestly don't believe that you can be any earthly good until you are heavenly minded. <laughs> Here, here's an example. If you want to make an impact on this world, the only way you will do that is to connect with heaven and to bring it to earth. Be one that lives for eternity and make all your choices based on it. Store up your treasures over there. Be a person of integrity. Allow God to teach you business with integrity. That's what I think. And so I wanted to show you something that was really powerful that I studied this week. Um, in the millennium, okay, we've talked about the fact that we're going to be raptured. 
And we're going to talk about the wedding next week. When we're raptured, we're going to be in heaven for, I think it's seven years. Okay? Well, oh, I know it's seven years. I'm sorry. I was thinking about something else. It's seven years because there will be seven years of tribulation down here on the earth. The Bible is very specific. Okay? So we'll be in heaven for seven years. And during that seven years, we're going to go through something called the, the judgment seat. But it's going to be a Bema seat, actually. You know what a Bema is? When... And the athletes have run their race and they stand there with the awards and all that. Well, that's what we're going to go through. And 1 Corinthians 3.12 talks about it. It talks about a day when you're going to stand before God. It's not to, for your punishment. This is not punishment. This is only for awards. And this is going to happen during the seven years during our marriage supper. But what's going to happen is when you stand there with all the things that you've done for Christ, some things you did, totally with a giving heart you didn't expect anything in return they're going to be gold but some things you did to get something out of something that's going to be wood, hay and stubble and it's going to be all passed through the fire and anything that is truly of God will pass through the fire and you will be rewarded for it but anything that's wood, hay or stubble is going to be burned up that's what it says <coughs> in 1 Corinthians 3.12 ok well there. What I studied this week is there are five crowns. There are five uh, awards that are going to be given at the Bema seat. And these are what you should aspire to. Write them down. Go back and look at them because we don't have time to go to them. But I really want you to see this. This was really powerful. <clears throat> it, the first one doesn't have a name. But you can find it in 1 Corinthians 9.25. And it's going to be given to those who have self-control and are victorious over our sinful nature. That's powerful. I'm going to get that one because <laughs> I learned to cage up my flesh. That's yay. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> my husband's going to tell on me. Okay, the second one, I'm going to no, know I'm going to get this one too, is given to soul winners. This one can be found in First Thessalonians 2.19 because like I told you, I won my previous husband to, to the Lord. He's in heaven. First Thessalonians 2.19. That one doesn't have a name, but it's given to soul winners. Mm -hmm. Now the third one is called the crown of righteousness. And you can find that in 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. And it's going to be given to those who have kept the faith in adversity and who also long for Jesus' second coming. It says both. The crown of righteousness. Now, 4 and 5 is the same name, but it's going to be two different people. And you can find this in James 1.12. And what's going to happen is, um, to the ones that endure trials, and they trust God to get them through, but that's not talking about martyrs. That's just the ones that have endured trials. Heavy, heavy, heavy trials. Is that number three or number four? This is number four. Did you not get three? Okay. And 5, Revelation 2.10, says the crown of life is going to be given to those who endure to a martyr's death. So you don't have to be a martyr to receive the crown of righteousness, but the martyrs will receive the crown of righteousness. Everybody, you said it has a chance to receive the crown. Chance? These are going to be given to the ones that pass through the fire. God's going to take you and everything you've ever done. You're not going to be punished for your sins, but you're going to pass through the fire all the works that you did on this earth for Him. That you say... Your works, but not you physically. No, no, no. No, your works. Like, for instance, there's a lot of people that are busy doing things for the church. Okay? But God never told them to do it. It's, it's not going to pass through the fire. Only what God told you to do is going to be rewarded. You see what I'm saying? And these crowns are going to be given to the people. We 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 should aspire to these. These got me excited this week. <laughs> so James one twelve. That, that's not that's not talking about salvation. Crown of life. No. Mm -mm. This is a this is the actual crown. Okay. The fifth one is the crown of life also, but it's uh, Revelation two ten. Those are the ones that are martyrs that are going to be given this. And I studied that with Hebrews uh, this week, so that. That's really powerful. That's really powerful. Okay, now I want to get through this real quick. Okay, um, 